That's right. What do you think it's going to be? Oh, imagine it for a sec. Could it possibly be the Abbasids here on Altai? Not a Civ you see too often, but Donster's got something special in mind. He'll be going up against the HRE, a Civ that we have been seeing more frequently on this specific map. And I'm hoping to see what the build is. Because when you're up against the HRE like this, the kind of awkward conundrum a lot of Abbasid players have had is they want to kind of eco-boom themselves, but... The kind of unwritten law of Age of Empires is you don't eco-boom when you're up against the HRE. Doesn't matter which Civ you are, when you're up against HRE, if you eco-boom, you're going to lose. Now, I know some people right now are like, wait a second, Divine DFP playing HRE. He's expanding, okay? I will give Divine credit where credit is due. This guy went from being just a Mongol and Delhi spammer to at least adding French in. And now he's trying to bulk it up with HRE. So I'll give him some credit. For like actually trying to expand, but yes, you're right. This this doesn't make sense. I don't. I think this is the first time I've caught Divine DFP playing the HRE in probably months. But it looks like he's kind of hard grinding them. He's mixing in French and HRE consistently in the last few days. Like only these two sieves. Maybe he's onto something. I mean, the HRE are become a pretty spicy choice if you actually want to dominate in the comp scene right now. It makes a lot of sense. We've seen some iterations actually already evolving in the Frisian Marshes. It looks pretty good for the HRE. And then also we're seeing players regularly try and exploit them on four lakes right now with mixed success. But even outside that beforehand, like people wanted them in the Arsenal because before we started adding these custom maps to the competitive scene for the Road to Wallow, Keep in mind that the HRE was actually the best Civ to pick on the map we rotated out, which was Mongolian Heights. In fact, they are so good that they have almost a 60% win rate with more games played at the highest level of HRE than any other Civ. It's actually pretty bonkers to think about. So that's why when you watch your pros take it to Mongolian, uh, they're almost always exclusively just picking the HRE. It's, it's just the most logical and easy choice. And while some people try to experiment with an out-of-the-box solution. Most people are just willing to accept that on such a kind of stagnant map, it's best to just play what's powerful right now. But the Abbasids wouldn't be seen as powerful here. I'm still wondering what like the complete thought process is of Arty. Um, this could make sense if you were thinking you're up against something like the Roost, because I actually quite like the Abbasids on choke point type maps against the Roost, just because you heavily discount everything they do reliant on cavalry. But against the HRE, although they might go towards calves, I think that it's more likely you get to late game. You're talking like Man at Arms, Lang's Neck. Now, if the HRE player does want to leverage Spearman, you can bait him in with Camel Archers. But I don't really see a reason why you're necessarily going to be forced to get Spears. Not to see if Ardy can force them out of there. In terms of power spikes, like what wing conditions are, I think for the Abbasids, you've got two approaches here. You can try a prolonged fuel engagement where you block your opponent and slow the TC boom up. Something you can be very efficient at because you save so much food on building more villages. Alternatively, you try to get to cast lanes fast and then you blitz in off the back of your build siege in the field. I'm a bigger fan of playing off the back of Feudal simply because otherwise the alternative is that you're rushing up to castle versus an HRE player and they'll always get there quicker than you. It's just known by now. Like there's, like I said, there's that unwritten rule that you don't race them. Um, you need to apply some pressure. Something I have seen a few more Bassett players doing recently, I don't know if they got inspired by Snooper's villager only challenge, but it's the outpost rush with the Abbasids. Sounds a little bit nutty, but RT has done that before. We've seen him do that against the Chinese. He done it against Avali in an hour plus game uh, earlier this week. And I think it actually could suit serve him pretty well here to like block out some potential, especially considering that if you look at Divine Spawn, He's got his gold on the side. It's pretty exposed. Also, wouldn't it be ironic to outpost spam divine, guys? Wouldn't, wouldn't that be somewhat enjoyable? No? Am I like the dark voice in people's heads? <laughs> oh, I like to think so. And Arty, looks like he actually got a reasonable spawn overall. So berries close to base, like extension as well. Should be able to access them for free. Divine unlikely to rush him. One thing Divine could be aiming for here is Castle Age Burgrave. I think it's a very powerful timing. And that actually wouldn't surprise me as to why Divine is starting to like spam this out. Because I think the Burgrave timing is quite an exploitable detail for HRE players on maps where they have condensed eco. And I think that's why we've been seeing an increase in the pick rate of this Civ here on Altai. Some people are still playing it. I'm not going to say wrong, but maybe like old meta with the Regnets. But a lot of players have been more exper experimental with the Burgrave. The logic is that you can build up to like 20, 25 man arms and then you dive into your opponent's fairly condensed base. Definitely work out well here. Nice defense is going up, Divine. 
fully aware of what I... It's almost like he just heard me say the words outpost rush. He's like, oh no, you don't. <laughs> Preemptively getting the outpost up in the choke point to make sure his food is going to be safe. We we'll want to protect the gold and it looks like that is already being sorted. Looks like Arty is going to be going for those outposts. Oh, surprise, surprise. What, what an unexpected move here out of Artorius. I never would have expected him to pull villages for an outpost as the Abbas. <laughs> he loves this move. He absolutely loves this move. And it makes sense, really. Like, you need to do something to contain the HRE player. Like, you want to economically boost, but you can only do so if you block a superior eco booster's upsides first. And... This outpost should do exactly that. And this is kind of the awkward thing. It's like he's going to Arislitz, but the delay is going to be too long to kill. I think if you pull the villagers back, if you min-max it, this outpost should go up successfully. It's just going to be a little bit uncomfortable party, and it looks like there's going to be a dive in to force out the garrison. You need to be careful because now the Arislitz are there with the Kobe range. He could actually insta-snipe these villagers. Whoop! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Pull back too late. Arnie. Oh, that's going to be annoying. Is he... No, no, Artie, Artie, don't, no, no, Artie. So let me just describe what Artie done there. He went in, and like, the metaphorical equivalent is he, uh, he touched a hot iron, and he went, ah, crap, that stings! And then two seconds later, he's like, I wonder if it's still hot. And now this is him being rushed to A&E after getting third degree pose. Like that, that was ambitious. He's even going to recommit for this. What's been now diving in? We'll start losing them. Just be careful. This villagers are going to be forced to garrison. And this is going to be a commitment to get the outpost up. He damn well wants it because he wants to slow down Divine. The problem is, would you really call this slowdown right now? Look at Divine's resources. He's getting away with a lot of this. Outpost maybe still goes up for Artie, but it's not going to be that simple for him because the reach in's there. Artie, oh no, why is this recommitment? The vine just sits there and you say, you know, are you, uh, you, you think that you can beat me? I was born in the outpost, right? Mold of I'm going to stop now. I'm going to stop. <laughs> it's really like that. Now the free villagers afterwards. Artie is so committed to this. Oh my god, if he didn't get that one, he'd have to be committed to somewhere else. Like, he would be going absolutely up the walls off this one. In the end, he does get the outpost up, will build the arrow slits, and does back away. But my god, what a heavy investment so far of Artie. Look at the difference in resources right now. Divine, the hard villager pool, like all that. All that to build an outpost that you abandoned and didn't wait for the arrow slits in. You're going to get zero value out of this. Oh, I don't know if this was it, folks. Double Camel Archer can maybe make it a little bit less sore for RT. He's going to try to repair up. And the Arrow Slits is just going to target him down. Ay, ay, ay. Divine still with the two-point lead here. And he'll keep it a two-point lead. Not a situation you want to find yourself in when you're up against the HRE. Oh, my God. Don, he was so tunnel-visioned on it. So adamant, it was absolutely necessary that he got an optimal placement as opposed to just shutting down part of the gold line. And now look at this. Because the outpost is gone for good, Divine hard commits under the gold with 15 people to ensure a quick tech up timing as he's already boomed on food. Cam Larch is just trying to dive through. We're going to find it a little bit hard to put the damage in required. Does at least snipe one more villager, but you know you need to be ahead. You need to be economically ahead on villager count right now for this to feel good. Second TC coming out from Arty, so we'll try to somewhat recover, but Divine going to be very quick on his unlock at this rate. Almost done with the required quantity of gold. And after that, it looks like it's going to be triple stables able to just zerg out the knights in mass. Wait, what? what? Yeah, I, okay. I, I think Divine's jumping the gun if he rushes out like that. That's absolutely unneeded. Artie's going to try to recrawl in, but by the time he does, there's going to be five or six knights in the field. So, going to have limited effect. You can see the effect on this gold coming in. If I'm divine, I hang around to get like 200, 300 extra gold before this outpost goes up. It's just more beneficial that way. Have someone else build into the landmark. I mean, we've got too much food as it is. There it is. Regnant's Cathedral. So, he's going to be a greedy boy, a greedy little tyke. And I can't blame him in this situation. Like, Artie's just kind of thrown himself into this early game with a clear timing in mind, and if that timing fails, he falls out of the game. 
And although he has delayed Divine's tech up, you have to wonder if it was worth it. He did at least get the second TC online. But eco-wise, he's not exactly booming ahead. He didn't really block out too much in the end. And because of the way that Divine structured his base, he got plenty of knights pushing out the beginners. But Divine Hardy continues with the crawl around. And some of you are like, you know, at what point do you stop? Is this worthwhile? Well, Don's still slowly climbing up. He's 47th in the world right now. And overall, he has been seeing a net positive out of these type of strategies. And he does like doing these a lot. So I can't blame him for relying upon it. You know, it's kind of a, a grim element of rank play right now. If you don't outpost Rush, your opponent might. Don is just trying to artificially inflate the, the win rate so the Abbas is off the back of this strat. Now it's a race up 17 workers. And look at this divine. Plenty of gold in reserve because he wants to get five knights out to start with. Five or six knights should be enough to take down these outposts unless they get fortified. Oh, no. The fortifications are coming out. So Divine's going to waste a lot more time trying to torch these down. The good news is you're heavily armored on the knights, so you shouldn't lose out. Bad news is you're losing your wood line right now because Don is just so relentless with this. It'll force him to shift to the, the front side. And this is where RT perhaps has an opportunity that arises if he switches into some sort of range composite. He did have the archery range already, so archers could be an option, but it seems to deter, like to your detriment if you go for the archers, considering there's already knights now pushing out for Divine. No, it's like, Adi, he's like, I've done my piece, time to start gathering wood. <laughs> We're dying. You could just die instead. Whoops. So that's going to be three villagers down, and Divine all of a sudden is going to find himself neck and neck on the villager count. Already shifting out with the prelates past these outposts because they haven't even started to be upgraded with the arrow slits yet. And look to move for those relics, and you already see that Don Art is on patrol in this area. Nice move coming out from Divine to identify that he would need protection. This protection will be good enough. Even with the camel on ease, you can't really compete with three oscillation knights like this. Meanwhile, back in... <laughs> Back in the blender that is Divine's generation right now. <laughs> like, there's not much he can access right now. But once he gets up to about 10 knights, he can just start torching down all these defenses, even with the fortified in. Prella. Oh, uh, uh, that's an easy take. Adi will just back away. Adi's actually buying a lot of time. That's the first relic that Divine's looking towards. Like, he hasn't gone out the front of his base yet, despite the fact that would probably be easier at this stage. And the problem with this is, like, it's kicking your timing down the road. In a way, this is beneficial to Arty because Arty is still playing this kind of catch-up game off of the feudal aggression. But in the next five minutes, if you don't start to grab these relics up, if you don't start to bank that gold and find your way scaling fully into castle, Arty will get a point of recovery. You have to remember at the end of the day, this is now two TCs versus one. Knights are able to start torching through this. If you take too long, though, you might see Arty invest in more fortified upgrades. Hasn't gone for it on the backside yet. He's at least blocking the gold, and that means that Divine is working with finite resources here. He did set up the marketplace to allow him for trade, but it's not really the way you want to be trading. You don't want to be trading towards gold as this civilization. Usually with the Regnets especially, you want to be trading away from it. Knights, in the meantime, are going to be counted out. Camelonese plus the Spearman mean that this is a reasonable trade for Don. However, at the end of the day, unless you can push additional spears out, it's going to start to backfire. Looks like he is getting more troops in the field, though. However, the amount of knights in the area, Divine will easily buffer him away. Pick up his first relic. No block point now, so it looks like Divine is starting to unlock his potential. He's moving out in the midfield as well, so we'll get the second relic very fast here. Nazi, like, he baited everything that side. He threw all of his troops to the right side of the map. It means he has nothing to defend the center. By the time he gets troops out there, it's going to be too little too late. I am getting a bit concerned that Arty isn't reaching up quick enough. He's doubling down on Feudal. Now, doubling down on Feudal can work when your opponent goes castle like this, but you have to have the military number advantage. And if you look, you can see Arty is still lagging behind because he keeps taking fights before he has mass. If he had, say, 10 Spearmen, 20 Spearmen here fighting, great. It's one or two Spearmen. And although Spearmen are meant to counter cavalry, they don't do so when it's in this numerical advantage for the countered unit. So two relics quickly coming in. Divine. Well, this is where the night numbers will continue to accelerate. Arty just trying to catch up on cheaper units that can counter his opponent. And this might offer up a transition for Divine. 
Would be good for him to go into Rax, maybe play into the Lang's neck to just insta wipe the spears. For now, he chooses to avoid the fight and go straight after the eco. Artie will be forced off of his berries. I find that very nice. Okay, that pump was terrible. Camel. Just one, given the unease. This is a bad trade for Divine now. He needs to back away from this. This is not a fight you want to be taking, but instead, Divine, he commits to this and he's going to pay an ultimate price for it. So many of his knights going down, such a costly loss, and it's because of this Camel unease. It's not just the fact that you're counted out by Spearman, it's the fact that you've lost 20% of your damage on a unit that relies entirely on base damage. No bonus against X or Y unit. And I don't know if that was a, a worthwhile throwaway for Divine. Because if you recall what we were saying just a minute ago, if you're Don and you want to win here, you play numbers. And you just got given numbers. So Don has a choice to make. Fall back and try to eco up and make your way up in a castle. Or push, push, push. I think we know what he's going to go for. With three TCs at the backside, he knows he'll eventually get there naturally. So he just wants to try and shut Divine down. Plenty of farmland to exploit here, but considering he's only into spears right now, it's very difficult to dive. The upside that RT does get is Divine is very reluctant to switch over to archers, as most HRE players tend to be in. It's to his detriment here. There's plenty of spearmen to justify it. Instead, RT will make his way into the ram. Ram that will be difficult to guard, considering he only has one ranged unit here. So if the village bull comes out, like you could instantly lose this if you're not guarding it closely. Right now, the Don start. Understanding he has a timing here. Understanding that Divine is rebuilding his army. He's going to quite rightly try to strike in because Divine, folks, was greedy. That attack, that attack was the sign of a man trying to cover a tech up. And you can see it in the resources as well. And Don can smell the greed from here. Smells like Gucci's and Prada. And he wants to punish that. No fancy Italian wear around here. Oh, no. Let's march in. Villager Pool's going to come out. Barty, quick in position with the spears to start diving in here. It's going to force you off the wood line. And you have to reinvest in Divine. This is late to do so. He waits so long to reinvest, and he doesn't even reinvest into a new unit type. Only now setting up the racks. It's going to be a little bit of a pickle here. The good news, at least, is you're an HRE player, and emergency repairs is a god's blessing. The bad news is that Arty now in your base is not going anywhere. And a lot of your eco is going to shut down and be condensed in the wrong place. Regnitz, heavy torch damage coming in. Trying to force the E-repair early so you can get through it faster. Divine, now with the switch up in the Lang's neck. Very late here. Should have had this going sooner. Like, actually a fatal error out of Divine. He's forfeiting a lot more ground than he should. Emergency repairs? Emergency, emergency repairs? Divine? What? I am at a loss, folks. I am actually... was. Oh, it wasn't in the... He didn't daisy chain it. Wait, no, he did. He's got the house. So he just didn't click the button? What? That is everything to you right now. That's your gold source. Oh, my God. All right, Adi has control of this game. Maybe Divine got, like, the, the bug. I think it does sometimes work still. It's just inconsistent. But that, that's a stinger right there. And Divine, now just trying to mass units to require gold, isn't going to work out for him here because he's going Langstick and Knight and has no gold anymore. Forced to use the E-repairs onto the market. Torch damage is going to start to target out the infrastructure. The house is going to allow him to push more units. And folks, this is most unfortunate for Divine because he was in good stead before he threw away those knights. And, you know, you're talk about maybe bugs coming out to affect me on the Regnets, but reality is he took that bad fight that put him in this position. If he just held the midfield, if he just continued to build, he would have been safe. But instead, he gets desperate. He takes a good raid on the berries and then a bad fight in on the spears. And now the follow-up fight, while decent for him, heavy damage has been done. Attacks has been levied and Don I is yoinking resources from his very side of the map. Lang's neck were at least able to save the day, but the concern is like, although it's a good fight for Divine, the way you now have another one of these good fights is by getting more gold. He doesn't have gold. And that's why he needs to get on the repair. Repair job is needed ASAP here. Make no mistakes, folks. Ardy doesn't mean to win in a one-on-one -on -one unit engagement. He just plans to throw so much crap at you, it overwhelms you. 
Right now, Divine DFP is the survivor with the shotgun and the AR. Don Arty is the zombies. And if there's anything I know from playing unlimited zombie modes, you never truly win. You're just delaying inevitability right now, and that's what it feels like here for Divine. Trying to pick up the relics, needs to bank them quickly here. Or the prelate could be targeted down. So far, the oh my god, the prelate's AFK. The prelate's not picking him up. He's gonna be sniped out. He didn't even get the relics after all that. Prelate barely alive. Fight coming out. Langsnack able to hold steady for the moment. Camel archers need to start targeting him down. That cleave damage is stinging. The repairs continue. Prelate didn't even try for the play to pick up the relic to buy time with the Wallalol. And now he won't get the relic at all. The best thing he could have done is actually pick this up and pulled it back so he could at least recover it afterwards. But now, now it's out of position. The Regnets is still not actually fully repaired. I think he's maybe just got the final tap of hammers by the looks of it, but he can't even access the relics anymore. Oh my giddy on. And now the Camel Archers are sniping out the Lags deck. Once the Lags deck are gone, you can't fight. It's the only reason why Donna is hesitant right now. And now the outpost. Oh, surprise, surprise. Artie says this game will end how it began. Outpost. Oh my, oh my. And Artie now making his way up. He's fully recovered. Ego is booming. He's doubling up the villager counter divine. Remember, off the back of this, Artie boomed up to three TCs. He fully recovered. He set up the farms as well. No weakness in his economy unless divine can raid it. But right now, divine is hard stuck in his base. He bought the resources to build four more Langsneck, but unless he can snipe the Camel Arches, he's not getting close. And we're just seeing a repeat of the typical issue out of HRE players. If they don't have any ranged, they suffer against these type of compositions. These Langsneck are glass cannons, and they are in too small a quantity to dive past the range formation now. Divine, he's hard stock. No gold. Can't access it, remember? These towers here, they covered it. They've blocked him out this entire time. And if you want to see the worst of the misfortune, Divine, he didn't have a retreat gold vein. Look at the backside here. There's nothing he could have played towards. It was all about this. He never cleaned up the outpost when he had a chance. He didn't protect the Regnets with an actual transition in a unit that counters what was coming. And it's why he has no recovery point. And it's why Artie quite rightly is in control of this game. It comes back to that dive towards Artie's base. Divine didn't unblock his gold. He was so cocky that the Regnets was good enough. And his gluttony is going to be his punishment here. As now Artie just waiting for those upgrades to start coming out. Into the preservation of knowledge. Only takes 30 seconds. Then into the upgrades to the spears and the camels. Which will be cheaper by 30%. On top of that, he could even think about targeting mangonels here. He doesn't even really need it, is the crazier part. If anything, he might go for trebuchets on the front line. Then again, why, why even take that approach when you can just keep pushing back against this? Divine has no resources. The wood's running out. The farm's course are eternal, but the gold, the gold is the problem. Divine, you can see the desperation now. He's hard onto the zone. He's trying to get a defensive keep. The Siege Workshop already in the front line. Artie should be going straight into the trebuchets. And from there, Divine will be going down into despair. Even the sprinkled up pl uh, placements now. Just compounding the problem because Divine can't dive that. He needs Siege of his own. He doesn't have gold though. Everything about what he wants to do, everything typically an HRE player wants to do is lock behind gold. If you can block them out, similar to things like we talk about with the Delhi, like gold is a very critical element of a lot of civs in this game. And HRE is king amongst them. It just feels like he's waiting, waiting for a mass that maybe doesn't ever arrive. Like, he has to realize there's at least two TCs behind this. Maybe because he thinks there's two TCs, he thinks he can recover. Because I don't think he saw the third. And that makes it even worse. Like, Divine thinks he can just keep building and building and building to a point that he'll be able to overwhelm. But you can see the numbers. Like, Donna is keeping up. In fact, now, militarily, he's ahead. With the trebuchets showing up, like, this should be where it starts to become obvious to Divine that Donna isn't two TC. Because he just castled up and his eco looks way too good for the amount of troops building on your borders for this to be only two town centers. Another wrap around the villages. They were committed to trying to get rid of the outpost because he needs the wood, but look at this repost now. 
Camel Archers. Camel Archers that Divine can't really assault. But Don's going to play it safe. He says, okay, I see the woodline isn't that great. I don't need to block you out there. I just need to build more traps. Start taking out everything because you can easily tug out these farms, remember. Can't wait trebuchets one hit each of these. And as they fall, so too will Divine's ability to field any units whatsoever. He repairs to slow things down, but even more outpost out of Arty. <laughs> Divine's like, Don, what are you doing right now? Just building your tomb, bro. Just building your tomb to honor you. And it was an honor to fight you. But I've got a match to get to, my next match. So let's get you out of this one fast, shall we? Don committed in. Holds with the Spearman front line. Arty trying to wrap around. Limited success with that. Wonder if this was going to be in the military wing. It could have been if you want to finish the game, but just shows you how far ahead he is when he doesn't even need it. Frontline won't last long, but the Langstead count is just looking baby level. Divine forced to go into Mana Arms instead. Mana Arms that will suffer because despite their missile resistance, Camel Archers hit so damn hard these days. 15 damage per shot means they make short work of these slow clunky units. Makes it all too easy to clean the house here. Divine. He gives it his best shot, but about to go under the, the 10 military count on the front line. Building up more troops behind it, but when the Lance is marching, I think he knows it's over. He's been heavily discounted. He'll make his way through most of the Camel Archers, but he cannot make his way through the Outpost, and he will not be able to make his way through the aggressive keep. Arty, from Outpost to Keeps, the oppression is complete. Divine will wave that flag. So I'm noticing in chat, like there's some comments going around that, you know, clearing the outpost was the wrong call or whatever. That, that I, I disagree with that. And here's the reason. Clearing the outpost is the wrong call, yes, if he had mana arms. Instead, he can dive. Instead, he has knights counted out by spears and he struggles to use them correctly. So the knights are actually quick enough and chunky enough. Like, like their best use of that stage is getting pressure off the outpost so you have a fullback resource. Like the issue is that... Divine took control of this game and he looked for a fight. He didn't look to snipe Eco out from Don's base and he also didn't look to give himself backup Eco plans by reacquiring the gold. This screwed him hard. He needed to either exploit an economical lead by sniping villagers from Artie's base or he needed to reacquire control of his own resources. What he didn't need to do is take a fight with a death ball of spears that's building. He threw this game away. Divine had control. That fight with the Knights made zero sense, even more so when there's a Camel Archer in the mix, reducing the damage your Knights out by 20%. On a unit that does not get bonus damage, so you can't even argue where, for example, Horsemen, you know, if they're attacking Archers and there's a Camel there, they're only losing 10% of the damage. You lose a full flat 20%, and you're up against the unit that counts you anyway. It's just a really bad fight for Divine to take, even more so when you're up against the Abbasses, as because of Phalanx, the units will begin attacking even sooner into the fight. Than you'd anticipate it, it just it doesn't make sense to me what divine done here i think he just like got a little bit cocky after he survived the outpost spam and he thought the game was all but over and he was incredibly wrong like rt was crafty he built up his eco behind this and he ensured that he was scaling into the late game in a way that divine clearly didn't expect and as a result don despite the fact he's only like 47th in the world takes out divine who i believe is fifth not bad donster not bad 